Welcome into week four. This is the BBOC tailgate presented by BetMGM. Calabrese and I, we bet college football player props. Yeah, those are available and we've been finding winners as of late. Four and one last week, 11 and three on the year. And last week, was sweat free, even our one loss. It's you know, it's over quick. You either know it or you don't. So you you don't even have to wait down, come down to the wire or whatever. These picks, you know, Calabrese feeling good. We got to treat keep the train rolling here, keep it going on the anniversary of I'm a man, I'm 40. Let's give some manly picks. Calabrese, start us off. All right, let's start with really arguably in terms of viewership eyeballs game of the week Colorado against Oregon coach prime going up to Eugene I'm going to go with a duck here in this spot though I'm going to go Tez Johnson Oregon's wide receiver over 45 and a half receiving yards I'd play this up to 51 and a half and it's pretty simple Tez is coming off his best game as a duck he went for four catches 88 yards two scores against Hawaii and when he was at Troy last year, he was always a big play receiver. He had six straight games where he had a reception of 30 yards or more. And you're seeing right now his chemistry with Bo Nix is improving. His targets are on the rise. But the reason why I have this one circled is the Travis Hunter effect. Lacerated liver, a ghastly injury. Hopefully he's back within a month. But he lives leaves a huge void in that secondary. And this was a Colorado defense that could not stop the pass as is. Dion says they're going to go with a corner by committee situation. That does not sound promising. Saying to me, you're going to have redshirt freshman, true freshman in the mix. So I'm going to see at least one big play in the passing game to Johnson. He'll get you like 75% of the way there on one reception. So like I mentioned, I'd play this over 51 and a half. You can get in the market at 45 and a half. Yeah, I hear a cornerback by committee and I'm thinking, uh, you know, I've heard running back by committee. I don't think it's good when you're already thin secondary and underperforming secondary just got a whole lot thinner expect a lot of points in that game and hopefully some yards as well from Oregon wide receivers and speaking of wide receivers for the third straight week I am going Vanderbilt's wide receiver Jaden McGowan you have to over you have have to. to You have to bet this until this train breaks down because every single week it's sweat free. Every single week you basically get 70 yards. I, other than the fact that Vandy is a non-public team, people are not enthused to run to the window to bet on a Commodore to do anything. That's the only explanation because this guy is just an ATM at this point. He is. His, His receiving number this week is over. I have over 46 and a half. So listen, let me tell you a quick story, Calabrese. Jada McGowan, he's gone over this number every single game this year and what they do this week they drop the number lower last week it was 52 and a half this week it's 46 and a half and i'm saying why why would that be because they're playing kentucky i think that's a good thing if they're chasing points all game long that only helps my case all i know is vanderbilt is 0-6 against the spread this year but they still chuck it to Jaden mcgowan so i have his over once again 46 and a half yards yeah this is the waste management over pick of the week because there's going to be garbage time for sure getting some yardage there in the final two drives when kentucky's just playing kind of a vanilla umbrella coverage trying to prevent the big play so i i agree with you i like that play a lot i'm going to go with an under here just to try to balance out the show a little bit nick singleton at penn state his rushing total is set at 66 and a half i would actually play it down to 63 and a half And it's pretty simple for anyone who's watched Singleton play in the last year and a half. He's a Paul Horning Award watch list member, which means that he's a Swiss Army knife. He runs, he catches, he's in the return game. But because of that, they kind of spread out his touches where Catron Allen, who's in the backfield with him, actually has more carries this year than Singleton, his 42 to Singleton's 36. And we just talked about garbage time. There's no garbage time yardage against an Iowa defense, even if they are leading, because you saw what, you know, Yursich, the OC at Penn State, has been doing in recent weeks. In the fourth quarter alone, backup quarterback Bo Perbula had nine carries. So essentially they go into like a de de facto wildcat with their backup quarterback. That really takes away opportunities for Singleton to get over this number against an Iowa defense that last year was incredibly stout. They were top five in a lot of key metrics. They held opposing teams under three yards per carry this year they're not quite at that level but they just don't give up explosive runs and that's how you lose a rushing total this season through three weeks they've only given up three carries of over 11 yards to running backs so i see this being a similar game script a similar kind of old school three yards in a cloud of dust kind of big 10 game and singleton i think will get probably to over 100 all-purpose yards but i'll do it you know catching a few passes 
on kick return and we'll call it 40, 45 rushing yards for him. So I love it at 66 and a half. Iowa's defense is good. Yeah. All right. News. Yeah. You just probably, hopefully you didn't learn that for the first time. And one of the things that we get, not for the first time, but newer in college football is that we get revenge games. So I'm, I'm looking over here, revenge game, what transfers? Yeah. I'm looking at Brennan Armstrong's rushing total. I have over 32 and a half rushing yards and listen, so this is NC state. They're playing UVA. Armstrong used to be the quarterback in Virginia. So now a little bit of a revenge spot in Calabrese. You taught me this. When you're betting quarterback rushing yards, you have to be cautious of sacks and tackles for loss because those will count against those rushing totals that can completely wipe out a great rushing day. But I ain't worried about that because Virginia, they have three sacks all year. Tackles for loss, they rank at the bottom of the barrel. So I expect Armstrong to get it going with his legs. Revenge spot. You know, I I don't think the kid can uh, can throw much. I, I'm not a huge believer in him, but he can skedaddle out of the pocket and certainly pick this up in a play or two. So Armstrong over rushing yards, 32 and a half. The pupil becomes the teacher there. I totally agree with you. You got to look at the sack totals, the tackle for loss totals, those creating those havoc negative plays. Virginia doesn't have it. So really, you know, by essentially having a clean sheet in terms of sacks, you're already at a distinct advantage in this game. All right, I'm going to close it out with an over. Will Shipley, the Clemson running back, not a rushing number, receiving. 19 and a half for his receive, receiving total, which I think is way, way underpriced. I'd play this up to 25 and a half. And you got to keep in mind, Shipley has always been a great receiver out of the backfield. He has 65 career receptions. And Garrett Riley, their OC, what he likes to do when he's countering pressure is to leak running backs out of the backfield, the screen game, swing passes, angle routes, wheel routes. He's going to have it all on the table for Shipley to be able to help out Cade Klubnik, who this year has been captain checkdown. He's only averaging 6.5 yards per attempt, so he's already making those short throws with regularity. Against the Florida State defense that blitzes 27% of the time, that's above the national average of 23%, and Jared Verse is an absolute terror off the edge, so even when they go with a standard four-man rush, they're going to get to club next, so there's going to be lots of opportunities for Shipley, and then we, we're just talking about Singleton and his running back by committee with Katron Allen. Phil Maffa is kind of like taking over that being that bell cow back. He's a big boy. He gets a lot of the carries in the red zone. So they're going to use him as the battering ram and then Shipley as more of that Swiss army knife. So I really like this here last year against Florida state. He had six receptions for 48 yards. I think it's going to be a, a similar kind of performance. I wouldn't be shocked to see him go over 50 receiving yards in this game, maybe pop one long screen pass. So at 19 and a half, this is my favorite play of week four. Yeah. And while Maffa does get those red zone carries, just, you know, since Shipley's been at Clemson, I'm a Clemson fan, obviously watch watch a lot of Clemson football. And when they play in a big game like this, they love to get Shipley the rock. This guy, uniforms all stained, you know, the stickers are falling off of his helmet. So I expect that same type of effort for Shipley. Give Shipley the rock. Calabrese should be a really, really good weekend in college football. We all over the map, ranked matchups, even the non-ranked matchups are good. I can't wait to just plant my ass on the couch and just settle in for a great, great weekend. Any parting words as we get ready for this week four? I'm just going to throw this out to the sportsbook community. I love playing the, these huge marquee matchups, but give a little something to the G5, some of the bottom of the barrel. I'm happy to to go through the trash, as Stucky likes to say, and pick out some winners. Um, so if you're interested, if you want to talk to me, please, let's get some of these on the books because there's all kinds of interesting passing totals um, out there in the market. You know, some of these G5 quarterbacks, now that they're in conference play, you're going to see people throwing for 300, 400 yards. Let's have some fun at that level, too. Let's have some fun. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow us in the action app. A couple trash men here on week four. Good luck, everybody, with your bets this weekend.